Howdy! So today we're going to read Proverbs chapter 17. And it says, <clears throat> Better is a dry morsel and quietness therewith than an house full of sacrifices with strife. A wise servant shall have rule over a son that causes shame, and so shall have part of the inheritance among the brethren. The finding pot is for silver, and the furnace for gold, but the Lord trieth the hearts. A wicked doer giveth heed to false lips, and a liar giveth ear to a naughty tongue. Whoso mocketh the poor reproacheth his maker, and he that is glad at calamities shall not be unpunished. Children's children are the crown of old men, and the glory of children are their fathers. Excellent speech becometh not a fool, much less do lying lips a prince. A gift is as a precious stone in the eyes of him that hath it, whithersoever it turneth that prospereth. He that covereth the transgression seeketh love, but he that repeateth a matter separateth very friends. A reproof entereth more into a wise man than an hundred stripes into a fool. An evil man seeketh only rebellion, therefore a cruel messenger shall be sent against him. Let a bear robbed of her wealth meet a man, rather than a fool in his folly. Whoso rewardeth evil for good, evil shall not depart from his house. The beginning of strife is as when one letteth out water, therefore leave off contention before it be meddled with. He that justifieth the wicked, and he that condemneth the just, even they both are abomination to the Lord. Wherefore is there a price in the hand of a fool to get wisdom, seeing he hath no heart to it? A friend loveth at all times, and a brother is born for adversity. A man void of understanding striketh hands, and becometh surety in the presence of his friend. He loveth transgression that loveth strife, and he that exalteth his gate seeketh destruction. He that hath a froward heart findeth no good, and he that hath a perverse tongue falleth into mischief. He that begetteth a fool doeth it to his own sorrow, and the father of a fool hath no joy. A merry heart doeth good like a medicine, but a broken spirit drieth the bones. A wicked man taketh a gift out of the bosom to pervert the ways of judgment. Wisdom is before him that hath understanding, but the eyes of a fool are in the ends of the earth. A foolish son is a grief to his father, and bitterness to her that bear him. Also to punish the just is not good, nor to strike princes for equity. He that hath knowledge spareth his words, and a man of understanding is of an excellent spirit. Even a fool when he holdeth his peace is counted wise, and he that sheddeth his lips is esteemed a man of understanding. So the verse that I was looking at out of this chapter was specifically verse 3. and. It kind of ties into the study I'm currently working on, which hopefully I'll put up uh, here soon. It says, The finding pot is for silver, and the furnace for gold, but the Lord trieth the hearts. And throughout the Bible, hearts are often linked with the spirit. The spirit of men, the spirit of something else, the spirit of God. Um, and here we're seeing that uh, he, he's saying the Lord trieth the hearts. And so we can go back to, um, uh, where was it? I think it was, hold on, I should have written this down before. Numbers 22. And they fell upon their faces, number 16, 22, and fell upon their faces and said, O God, the God of the spirits of all flesh, shall, shall one man sin, and wilt thou be wroth with all the congregation? And so we see here that it calls him the God of the, the, God of the spirits of all flesh. And there, this isn't the only verse. Throughout the entire Bible we see um, that the Lord tries the hearts. So we look at Ephesians, uh, actually will there last. If we look at uh, Psalm 26.2 
Examine me, O Lord, and prove me. Try my reins in my heart. If we look at uh, Psalm 139, 23, and 24. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. And see if there be any wicked way in me, and lead me in the way everlasting. Uh, 1 Thessalonians 2, 4. But as we were allowed of God to be put in trust with the gospel, even so we speak, not as pleasing men, but God, which trieth our hearts. And again, we see that term again, that he trieth our hearts. And uh, Hebrews 4, 12 and 13. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight, but all things are naked and open unto the eyes of him with whom we have to do. And Romans 8.27 And he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. 1 Corinthians 4, 5 Therefore judge nothing before the time and until the Lord come, who both will bring to light the hidden things of darkness, and will make manifest the counsels of the, heart, of the, of the hearts, and then shall every man have praise of God. Um... So here's a quick search just to show how um, spirit and heart are usually connected. And it's just all of these show the connection between heart and spirit. Um, not, that, not to say that they're the same thing, uh, but they're definitely... They're definitely very similar. He says, "But by uh, a merry heart maketh cheerful like a maketh a cheerful countenance, but by sorrow of the heart the spirit is broken." And um, if we look here, Romans two twenty nine. But he is a Jew, which is one inwardly, and circumcision is that of the heart in the spirit, and not in the letter, whose praise is not of men but of God. And Ezekiel 36, 26, A new heart also will I give you, and a new spirit will I put within you. And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh, and will give you a heart of flesh. And so, um, I did that search just to show sort of the connection I'm making here. In Proverbs chapter 17, where he says the Lord trieth the hearts. And so what we're looking at here is something that's spiritual. A heart is, um, I'm not going to say it's only spiritual because it definitely, uh, if it's spiritual then it's, it's hard to express because obviously spiritual things are a little bit um, difficult to express. but. Basically, what the Lord's looking at is spiritual, and um, this is going to take us back to Second Corinthians chapter ten. He says, "For though we walk in the flesh, do, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of, of our warfare, of our warfare, are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. And so, the weapons of our warfare, warfare, are not carnal. Well, what are they? Well, if we go to Ephesians six. Verse 12, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. And so, 
the war is spiritual, and he's trying our hearts spiritually. He's not looking to what you know can be seen, not our physical actions. And I think it's very easy to fall into the concept that we can somehow do something or do a certain type of behavior or have a physical action that pleases God when in fact what he's looking at is what happens in the heart that which can't be seen. And this goes back to Galatians 5 where we see this I say then walk in the spirit and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. And so what we see here are all these works of the flesh which are against God and the fruit of the spirit. So